So it sounds like Games Workshop is in a bit of hot water this week after some leaks and then comments made by community managers on Twitter, X, whatever it's called. There seem to be a few sides to it, some for it, some against it, so on and so forth, and what side I take really doesn't matter. What I want to talk about is moving forward, but to move forward, we have to go back. Mostly because I just want to explain my position, sort of. So I started uh, Wargaming back in the 90s, uh, and I basically started when I got a Space Marine out of the back of a magazine. Well, the Space Marine wasn't in the magazine like a card or something was, and you sent it in, and then they gave you some Space Marines to paint, something like that. I can't remember the specifics, but it was something like that. That's what got me into it. Young me then spent basically all of what little money I had on Space Marines and, like, a ton of Warhammer Fantasy armies. Since then, I think I've spent thousands of dollars on minis and books from Games Workshop, and that's not really a brag. I guess it's kind of like a cautionary tale. Anyway, I've tried other war games, War Machine, Hordes, Dead Zone, Lord of the Rings, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I've bought way too many pretty Kickstarter board games and war games that I've never actually played. Mostly looking at you there, Wrath of Kings. Oh man, I love those models so much back then. They still look great today, too. Just, I mean, look at these. Uh, mine aren't quite this pretty because I never painted them, but they were just, they were cool models, but I never got into the game. So back to Warhammer. I, I don't have the largest collection, and I don't know a ton of the lore. These are my confessions. And I've never claimed either of those things, I suppose. But Warhammer has always held, you know, like a spot in my heart. It's something that I cherish because it was one of the first things that I ever got into. Now, having said all that, uh, a couple years ago, I made a decision to stop buying from Games Workshop completely. Uh, there were a number of reasons I did it, but none of them really matter now. I still look at the occasional new models they're coming out with, and I see them all over, but I just, I have no want or need to buy them anymore, and that's okay. I guess my point is, is I've been here before, if you are one of those people who's angry at what has happened, but you don't want to completely leave your favorite hobby behind, you just don't want to give money to Games Workshop anymore. Well, here's my secret. 3D printing. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, so I kind of apologize for that, I'm awkward. We're sorry. We're sorry. So if you've made it this far, basically we have to make a choice now. Uh, what kind of 3D printing do you want to do? Essentially, there is resin or FDM printing. Now, to preface this, these are my observations. They might not be everyone's. Since we're talking about miniatures, the first thing we should talk about is details, and resin is by far better than FDM when it comes down to details. The layer lines are just so much smaller, it can make those tiny objects, and they can look great. I've seen people make uh, miniatures with FDM. It's just they never look quite the same as a resin print. That leads right into kind of what kind of sizes are you looking at for these prints. So like with the resin, I typically do my smaller miniatures, stuff like that. The FDM, usually larger. Um, tanks, knights, terrain, stuff like that. Doesn't mean you can't do small items with the FDM or large items with the resin. Uh, typically with the resin, though, I'll have to break them up into pieces and glue them together. So here's a resin miniature on the left and an FDM one on the right. Hopefully you can see... Uh, how detailed the left one is compared to, I mean, they're different models, but the right one uh, is just, you can see the layer lines a lot better, which is not necessarily a good thing. Here's what I've been normally using my FDM for, like this uh, little paint shelf, um, but then also here's a resin kind of knight, although the knight was printed in multiple pieces and then glued together. So how long do these take? Uh, and that's kind of a little bit more complicated. I think of my resin printer as printing quicker, but it's technically not quicker. It just can print more things at the same time. The best way I can describe it is an FDM printer is basically drawing your whole print. So it starts in one spot, goes along the whole bottom layer in one line, and then goes to the next layer, does the same thing, draws and continues. A resin printer, on the other hand, is like a stamp. So it stamps the whole layer at once. This leads to trying to max out your build plate. So basically you want to put as much stuff on your build plate at once because it's going to take the same amount of time no matter what. So again, the, the idea being if you have one miniature that you want to print out, there's no reason not to print a whole bunch of other miniatures on the same build plate because it's going to take the same amount of time. Because the print time is not based on the amount of models you have, it's based on whatever the highest model is because that's the farthest layer. So, theoretically, you could probably find a print where it would be faster on the FDM because it could draw faster than the resin print could print each layer, but that's probably some sort of outlier case. Durability of prints typically goes to the FDM. Uh, resin prints are fairly brittle, 
there are some better uh, resins like I use ABS like which is typically stronger but still if you hit it wrong or something stuff breaks on thin small pieces a lot so cleanup again t typically goes to the FDM just because unless you have a failure it's usually pretty easy like I sometimes have to clean up a little bit of uh, glue that's left on the plate uh, but with resin it's got a whole process like you have to clean off the extra resin you have to then clean the print and a couple different things like I use a water and then I also use a cleaning solution and then I go back to water and then <laughs> in addition to that you then have to actually cure the print which is a whole nother process because that's how you like finally uh finalize the print and make sure that it's hard once you get the process down it's it's not too bad it just takes a bit of time and then also it costs a little bit extra because you're buying those cleaning supplies and that leads to the cost cost wise i actually think you can get resin printers or fdm printers fairly cheap now like under 200 bucks you can buy either one um the resin is just going to be a little bit more costly only i think because of those extra support items i suppose the the cleaning products you have to wear gloves every time because you don't want the resin to touch you uh, unless, at least not for very long uh, stuff like that both printers have some stuff you have to do afterwards well not necessarily have to but like with an fdm printer a lot of times you'll see the layer lines so some people like to either sand those off or i think there's some way you can use alcohol or something like that to get them so that you don't see them as easily uh, resin a lot of times will have these little bumps from the supports because you have to support the item when you print it and a lot of times that will leave little bumps that you either have to sand off or try to hide issues that can pop up. I've had way more issues with FDM, although it is the one I'm less familiar with. But there seem to be a lot of little things that can happen, like uh, your end can get clogged, your temperatures aren't right, it's too cold outside, it's too hot outside, all kinds of stuff like that. With resin, once I kind of dialed in my settings, I, I don't really have any problems except for support issues where the supports fail and it looks something like this. Every once in a while, I'll lose a little limb, and but that gives me a chance to make a new one. Last little bit, uh, basically resin is toxic. At least you don't want to keep it on your skin very long. Uh, and then with FDM, uh, you can make a lot of usable items. So it's how people make like, I don't know, gears or little robots and stuff like that. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that you do with FDM. So in conclusion, the biggest difference is what you want to print with it. Miniatures, I'd probably recommend resin. Uh, big stuff, recommend the FDM. If it's a price issue, the FDM is probably going to be cheaper in the long run just because of all the little stuff. The last thing I want to talk about is where you can find some files. The way I started was going into Google and basically just typing in whatever I wanted to look for and then STL, which is the type of file typically. Then you're just going to look around and see if you find anything you like. The next one I like to use is called Yegi. Uh, it's just yegi.com and it's basically a specific uh, 3d model search engine there's others but this is just the one i like depending on what i'm looking for that's typically where i'll start one of those two places and go from there when you start looking through those searches you'll start to notice that there are a number of sites that pop up a lot thingiverse my mini factory cults 3d those are kind of the big ones from there just find the creators that you like their models and uh, you might check out if they have a tribes which is on my mini factory or a lot of them will have Patreons as well. And you get a lot of models usually for not too much a month. It's a pretty nice system. If you decide to go with some of the subscriptions, I would recommend finding ones that back up the files someplace like My Mini Factory or Printed War Games. And just as a final note, uh, a couple creators I might recommend checking out besides Gomak or however you pronounce that are The Maker's Cult, One Page Rules, and Titan Forge. Each of them have a large selection of models each month for a pretty good price, so I would check into them. There are also hundreds of other creators constantly pumping out better models than Games Workshop, so just get out there and look for them. If you made it this far, I'd greatly appreciate it if you took a look at the rest of my channel. I've even got a playlist where I've been slowly working my way through 3D printing all of the Warhammer factions, so that might be something that would interest you. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.